Allah's beautiful name, Al-Mujib. So we ended with that sister. Her daughter was sick. The only means she can take is make dua, pray, and put that wet cloth over her, the forehead of her daughter to cool things down. All of a sudden, someone knocks on the door. The father goes, which is the grandfather of the daughter, the father of the mother. So I'm going to use the interchangeable words. He opens the door, and lo and behold, it was a doctor. So the doctor said, hello, I'm coming here to see the daughter of yours that is sick. He said, what? He said, I came here to see the daughter of yours that is sick. He said, okay, sure, come here, come here. So the doctor walks in and he looks at the daughter. He says, okay, you know what, I check up on her. And he said, there are some medications she needs to take. So he writes the prescription, take this, make sure you go and buy these medications as soon as possible and inshallah she'll be just fine. So that doctor is done checking up on the girl and then he walks outside the apartment and he waits by the door. The grandfather says, Jazakallah khair, I said, Wa or whatever words that were exchanged. Then the doctor is still standing. The father said, Khair, what's going on? Like, is everything is fine? He said, you called me to come and check on a private session on your granddaughter. So there's a fee for this. I left my family. I came at 1 a.m. It was almost 3 a.m. right now. And I want my fee for that private session. He said, doctor, we never called you. He said, subhanallah, astaghfirullah al-azim. You woke me up in the middle of the night and I drove all the way to your village that is so far from my house. And with all of that, you tell me you didn't call me? Subhanallah. In the middle of this conversation, what happened? Another person from another apartment opens the door and calls out loud, Oh doctor, oh doctor, come please check our granddaughter for she is sick, ya doctor. We called you, we're the ones who called you. The doctor looks at the first apartment, surprised and astonished and tells them I'll be back. And then that doctor goes to the other apartment and talks to them and sees the granddaughter is actually sick and gives them the medication and prescription. That doctor goes back to the original apartment and says, tell me your story. Wallahi, I did not come here by coincidence. Allah made me come here. Then the grandfather explains, well, my daughter, her husband left her for some time. He's coming back, inshallah. And my granddaughter was so sick and we were making dua all night. That doctor said, it's Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala that responded to your dua. It was Allah al-Mujib, the one who basically fulfilled that request. And wallahi, I will pay for all the medication and all your needs, I'll give it to you with no problem until your husband comes back. Then everything inshallah will be set by the time your husband comes back. Everything is good. And that doctor was so happy. He personally went down to the pharmacy, bought the medication, then gave it back to the apartment and he took care of them all the way until the husband came back. This is the work of Allah and Muji, brothers and sisters. This is the work when you take the means and you make dua to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Ya Rabb, Ya Rabb, help us. And Allah responds and Allah heard and Allah saw. And what's nice about this story is that when the husband came back, the allowance from the doctor stopped. So the wife, whenever things became tough on them financially, she tells her husband, how about you go away for some time? Let the doctor start coming and giving us back more money, subhanAllah. But the point of this is that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responds to our request no matter what it may be. Another name that comes with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Al-Mujib, and you find that in the Quran, what do you think it may be? For those that read the Quran, huh? What name comes with Allah Al-Mujib? What do you think? I'll give you a few seconds to think about it. I'll give you a hint. Surah 2, chapter 11, verse 61. Allah says in the Quran, Inna Rabbi Qaribun Mujib. Allah, my Lord, Inna Rabbi, my Lord, is close, is going to respond. Allah is Qarib. The name Allah Al Qarib means the one who is close to you. And another ayah, Surah Al Baqarah, chapter 2, verse 186. Allah says, Wa idha sa'alaka ibadi anni. And when my slaves, O Muhammad, ask you about me, then I am near. Allah is so near that He does not tell Muhammad وسلم, to tell us that Allah is near. He's so near, Allah tells us directly. I'm close, I respond. You see the Mujib and Al Qarib that come hand in hand. When you make dua, Allah responds. So go ahead and follow the orders of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Respond to the call of Allah, whether it was salah 
fulfilling the obligations, moving away from the haram. لَعَلَّهُمْ يَرُشُّدُونَ So you may be guided. Allahu Akbar. Look at another verse. You might ask, how close is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us? Like how much does Allah know about me? Like I have a close friend that knows a lot about me. But how close is Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to us? Allah says in the Quran, Surah Qaf, chapter 50, verse 16. Allah says, وَلَقَدْ خَلَقَنَا الْإِنسَانَ وَنَعْلَمُ مَا تُوَسْوِسُ بِهِ نَفْسُهُ And we have created the insan, the human being. And we know whatever whispers goes inside them. وَنَحْنُ أَقْرَبُ إِلَيْهِ مِنْ حَبِلِ الْوَرِيدِ And we are closer to him. We are closer to her than the jugular vein. Allahu Akbar. Allah is closer to me and you than our jugular vein. How? In a way that befits His Majesty. We cannot say how and taqif and tamthil and no ta'atil. Remember we mentioned that thing was the second episode about the introduction. That we don't distort the meaning. We don't deny it. But Allah is so close to us. He's aware of everything that which we do. Now the question that comes. How is this of benefit to us? How do we benefit that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is al-qareeb? I'll mention three quick points insha'Allah for you to taste the sweetness of knowing that Allah is close to you. As you note already, we covered about five names already. Al-Qareeb, Al-Mujib, Al-Sami' Al-Basir, Al-Alim. And the focus is more on Allah Al-Mujib the most. When you know Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is Al-Qareeb while making dua, this means you don't have to go in details. So when during your exam, let's say question number five, part A, is giving you a hard time. You don't say, Ya Allah, question number five, part A, is it a plus or a minus? All what you do, you might say, Ya Allah, help me with my exam. Mukhalas. And Allah is so close to you, He knows exactly what is it that you're in need of. When Allah is so close to you, when you make dua, you don't have to repeat yourself. If you note, when I sometimes speak, I stumble and I mumble here and there, and I apologize for my speech sometimes, and I really apologize if I was a little confusing, if I spoke fast. But subhanAllah, we're human beings, and you might not understand. But because Allah is so close to us, you don't have to repeat yourself. He already knows what you're trying to refer to. Allahu Akbar. The third thing about Allah al qareeb and the benefit that comes with it is that since Allah is so close to you, you don't have to be embarrassed towards asking things that you need of, even though you might think it's a little embarrassing or you might be a little shy towards it. So you may make dua, Ya Allah, Ya Allah, please, a plasma TV, 42 inch, Ya Allah. Some people might laugh at you, but you really need the Plasma TV for whatever reason, to watch this program, inshallah, for you to share with others. I ask Allah to bless you and bless the program. I mean, Rabbil Alameen. So Allah so close, you don't have to be shy. Tayyib, when is the best time or when is the closest time you can be to Allah? So Allah is so close to us. When can we be so close to Allah? Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And don't forget, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he said, أَقْرَبُ مَا يَكُونُ الْعَبْدُ مِنْ رَبِّهِ the closest location you can ever be to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala وَهُوَ سَاجِد When you are in the state of sujood. So the Prophet advises me and you what to do in this state when you're so close to Allah which is in the state of sujood. The Prophet said فَأَكْثِرُ dua. So in this case, since you're so close to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase your dua while in the state of sujood. Now, just to add more as you note in this talk about dua I'm not really focusing basically on Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in a way that how should we make dua. But I'm focusing on Allah himself, on his capabilities, on Allah's abilities, on how Allah responds. And I really believe it is very, very important and crucial that whenever you want to talk about dua, talk about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Talk about the one who's going to respond. Talk about how much power he has. And this will make you confident when making dua. Because you know, if someone has all that power, all that kingdom, then definitely such a small dua, such as, Ya Allah, get me this or get me that. Allah will say, Kun fayakun, be and it will be, subhanAllah. So when it talks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, I would like to mention just one example to relate in our daily life. If you would like to talk to a president of whatever country, how easy is it to talk to them in person, one-on-one? Some of you might laugh. Like, really? Talk to the president? Are you serious, brother? Just give it a shot. What would you do? I'll go to the government website. Okay, you go there. You go to contact us, then you find like a 1-800 government or whatever it may be. And if you're lucky, the government answers and they call on a Sunday and they say, oh, we're closed on Sunday, please call us on Monday. And you're like, okay, I'll call on Monday. Then you call on Monday and then a machine answers and then you press zero, I want to talk to the operator. 
Then you go to the operator and then they tell you, yes, sir, how can I help you today? I'm like, can I talk to the president? She's like, psh, psh, I'm laughing. I'm like, hello, are you laughing at me? Oh, no, sorry, sir, I'm not laughing at you, I'm sorry. You want to talk to the president, there's another number you have to call and a very long, long, long cycle. And if you're a very lucky person, you get to the secretary of the president, you book an appointment, which is maybe six months from today, at a time where you're working from like 9 to 9.30, and you tell the person, I can't come on this time, I'm working. She will tell you, you work around the president's schedule whenever you want to ask for something. They're like, oh, okay, whatever. Then after all that work, if you're lucky, the president will be meeting with you. And if you're very, very, very lucky, the president will respond to your request. Allah is the best of examples. You pick whatever time you make dua. You pick the topic. You pick the location. You pick the period and the duration. And Allah is available anytime, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., as long as you want, whatever language you want, and Allah and Mujib will respond. Allahu Akbar, appreciate. I ask you by Allah to go make dua to Allah and Mujib. And be certain that Allah will hear you, Allah is close to you, Allah knows about you, Allah saw you, and Allah will respond, inshaAllah. Go with that attitude and learn from these hadith, these ayat that we mentioned. Go in the state of sujood and please remember me in your dua. And ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless us all and bless this program. Jazakumullah khair. And I'll see you next episode talking more about Allah al Mujib and the other beautiful names. Wassalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Praise be to Allah.